there, it's Peter Buick. So welcome to this little presentation. It's uh, about CCD, the new, not so new, kid on the block. And basically it's about SEO and what has, uh, I can't really say replaced SEO, but what is the new SEO. Because um, Google obviously put a, you know propaganda out there and in a lot of people mind, people's minds SEO is actually completely dead. But of course it isn't because search engines still exist and something has to appear in the results. But what's replaced it I'm calling CCD and we'll explain what that is in a minute. So you've probably witnessed all the changes in SEO, search engine optimization. Um, it became search engine marketing at some point and uh, we could now call it um, COM, Crowd Optimization Management, which is kind of uh, you know, where the, all the social stuff um, came in, and people talking about social factors and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'm going to call it um, CCD, and as you can say, see, that actually stands for Content and Crowd Demand. Okay, which is a bit weird, isn't it? But we'll talk about that in, as we go on. So. Crowd optimization basically is the new SEO, SEM. Okay, um, as I say, I'm Peter Buick. I've been over 30 years in the game, almost 36 actually, and I'm still breathing. Yay! But enough about me. Um, the question probably in all our minds should be, you know, what Google want? And I always remember um, the best thing that Google ever told me, which was to ignore what we're doing and you just look after you know what you want to do and we'll sort the rest out and that's really you know great advice because it's not really about pleasing Google by doing little tricks and hacks and stuff like that um, now obviously some things are important and they add up things like uh, you know on-site optimization um, you know having you know authority backlinks is obviously um, what would be ex you know normal if you were an authority in the, in the um, situation and you know naturally if you are um, you know somebody of significance then social activity not just uh, you know bookmarks and that don't you know get clicked or anything but social activity would be again a natural kind of thing so basically anything that's natural is good and Google say that they will you know pick up on that and anything which is unnatural or has a fingerprint a fingerprint a footprint or something that could be considered a footprint uh, is bad and that's basically why Google said you know you just do whatever is best for your audience and we'll work out the rest okay and um, you know that's basically where CCD um, fits in so it's a bit. I don't know if you remember the uh, the film Highlander, with the main character called uh, Connor Connor McLeod, and um, he was uh, you know infinite life. Um, I don't know what he was actually warrior or something. Um, but uh, his you know thing was that there could only be one, so they always ended up fighting each other. So that there was always only one, and luckily for Connor, he tended to be the only one that was left. Um, but for some reason, which are never quite clear to me, uh, there could only ever be one. Um, but in Google's eyes, there can only really be 30. And you know, th we could say they only want one, but that's not true because they actually want 30 because they want the other 29 to basically pay for, uh, you know, ads or you know, or to try harder to be in the number one slot. So there has to be some competition. But they don't want to index billions of pages just to ignore them and put up the top 30. I mean, I'm sure when you've done a search and it comes up and says, you know, 1.2 you know, million results or something, that's what they think is out there. They haven't even bothered to go and check now. Because if you go to, you know, page 997, you'll find out that actually there was only maybe, you know, 30 pages or 40 pages of 10. So they've only actually even bothered to index uh, or actually, you know, thoroughly index 40 of them. You know, they may have gone and looked at the others. They may have had a, you know, quick guess that there are 1.2 million other pages out there. But <laughs> they don't care about them. They're not. They're not going to give you those results, um, no matter you know how hard you ask. Okay, so they don't really care. They just want you know something like the top 30 results, um, and they want those to be the most relevant etc etc yes of course but 
but they really only care about that. So unless you're in the top 30, um, then obviously that's an issue. But how do we get in the top 30? Because if you're on page, um, you know, 600, um, or sorry, position 600, and they're not even bothering to, you know, list past 400, then how do you ever get, uh, you know, to the front of the queue to get reconsidered, to be reappraised for, the, you know, the actual quality that you do have? And the short answer to that is what's supposed to happen is that they periodically ch recheck, which is what the Google robot's supposed to do, and see if you've become much better at what you than you were before. And if you are, then they were supposed to reconsider you and you know maybe put you in the top 30. But of course, that doesn't always happen. It happens uh, very slowly if it does happen. And basically, um, what systems like CCD will do is it will bump you to the front of the queue for reconsideration. Now, one of the th you know the big themes uh, that's going to keep recurring in this presentation is that uh, we can no longer uh, promote crap with crap. Okay, we can no longer promote crap with crap. Those days are gone. They were gone probably 10 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago. Um, uh, yeah, you could fool Google for 24 hours or something, but then they would work out that it was crap, or you were promoting with crap, and then they would, you know, just boot you out the uh, the results. Uh, and obviously, you could keep trying and whatever, but obviously, the, they've got much uh, better and quicker and more accurate at um, detecting people who are trying to scam the system or game the system. And that's the thing about CCD is it's not really gaming the system. We're not lying. We're not trying to you know, use a trick or a loophole or something. We're just doing uh, more than the normal guy to get reconsidered for the front of the queue. Okay? We'll talk about that more in a minute. So I'm going to use the word persuasion, and persuasion usually freaks people out because they think it's, you know, brainwashing and evil. Um, but p persuasion, true persuasion, was never ever about brainwashing or hypnotizing people to do what they don't want to do. Okay? It's always actually been about um, putting, giving people new information, putting things into context, um, giving them uh, extra information, showing them how to reframe what they're thinking so that they can actually make up their minds when they've got all of the facts. Because we're all very blinkered in what we believe and we tend not to, dis you know, to consider the things that are new. So we really need to be shown uh, you know, what the new realities and truths are um, in order so that we actually consider them uh, and then decide, make up our own minds, if that would actually be best for us. Okay, and it's always up to the individual to decide what's best for them. Okay, not up to anybody else. Um, and, you know, true persuasion is, is just about that, just giving people all of the facts they need, making sure that they've looked at things um, you know, uh, from a wide standpoint, because things are very seldom black and white. There's always a shade of grey, and uh, it's you know showing people uh, you know what is in that grey area, because most people just ignore it and go, well, it's either black or it's white. I don't care. So we have to show them the grey area, and that's really what persuasion is: showing them what isn't clear cut, so they can decide if they want to put it more to the white or more to the black. So. So I'm going to use the word persuasion, but really I mean putting it into context, reframing it so that people can make up their own mind. Okay, so you know, is SEO dead? People keep saying that it's not strictly accurate, but SEO, in terms of the old way of looking at it, in just terms of pure backlinking and backlinking from sites who don't even want you there, um, you know, doing fake commenting and all that kind of nonsense. Uh, yes, that's been you know, that is dead, and it's been dead for quite a long time, and that's why it really always was SEM for search engine marketing, not SEO SEO for optimization. It's always really been about uh, marketing, but now even SEM has evolved into what I'm calling uh, CCD. So if you've been in SEO or around SEO in any kind of way. I'm sure you've heard all of the rumours and theories and, uh, you know, supposed tests and stuff where people have tried to guess what it is that Google look for. Um, and, you know, that's always assuming that Google are the only, um, you know, uh, act in town, which they're not. They're only 
60% of it, so that still leaves 40% of the rest of the world uh, doing their own thing, but everybody obsesses with Google, so I'm going to obsess with Google in this presentation as well. Um, but, you know, the, the people have had loads of theories about what they think Google are looking for, uh, the kind of triggers that they're looking for. People have, in, you know, intimated that bounce rate is important and somehow that Google know, uh, you know, how long people are on your site for. Uh, and if you use the back button on search and that kind of thing, um, and that they're tracking you with, uh, you know, whoever they can track you. Um, and... Um, uh, you know, there's been theories about social engagement, that you know, the number of clicks that you get, the number of comments you get, um, all that kind of stuff um, is, you know, all um, feeding into your, for want of a better word, better word SEO or SEM score. And, uh, you yeah, know, there's a lot of truth in a lot of that. Um, but then Google suggested that that had changed. And obviously they roll out their little... Uh, updates and the you know massive changes happening in the search engines rankings and everybody panics and uh, you know big powerhouses that we considered were on you know on top of toppled and you know big players got uh, apparently penalized and pe people got emails saying oh you're in a bad link neighborhood you better clean up your dirty links and uh, you yeah, know then everybody started to panic about that and sending out requests to have links to them removed uh, and you know to at least have no follow tags added and all that kind of stuff and uh, you yeah, know all these courses come about how to appeal um, if you know against these bad link neighborhood things in fact there's another product coming out in a couple of um, weeks um, about that and how to manage that and you know that's all potentially true maybe you have been penalized in that way and maybe you do need to do something about it in that sense but that doesn't really change um, the issues about what we're talking about here and also what we're talking about here is actually largely immune um, to you know to that now obviously if you want you know search engine rankings from Google per se then uh, you might have to add in all that bad link neighborhood stuff uh, you know removal uh, into it but basically what we're talking about is an, you know another way to get search engine traffic and um, the way to make sure that when you are considered for search engine traffic um, that you get um, the uh, what you deserve basically um, and obviously you know you can always just buy another domain name for you know ten dollars or whatever it is and start again uh, from scratch obviously do, do, <laughs> do due diligence first that the domain name hasn't just expired and was used by some complete um, spammer or something um, which can happen uh, <laughs> I must confess that I've done that before now um, and um, uh, well you know there's no solution to that you just have to throw your ten dollars away but you know I'll check before you buy it uh, but you know, you think the domain name is free, you think whoopee, but what you don't realise is that somebody has had it before you and then let it lapse because they completely knackered it. Um, so, due diligence. Um, anyway, but uh, you know, so assuming that we're in you know, good stead or in, in you know, unknown stead, not unknown, in no stead uh, with Google's eyes, then this is what we're talking about here. But even if Google hate us, this actual um, CCD method will still manage to survive uh, even being hated by Google. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Wouldn't you like to be able to carry on despite whatever Google thinks about you? But obviously, as I said, if you are worried about what Google think and you want that extra bit of search engine traffic as well, then you know you need to follow the rules by the rules that you know that Google want. So if you're in a bad link neighborhood, then you need to go through that process. And I guess that's why that product's coming out in a couple of, couple of weeks. But anyway, uh, but, you know, as I say, CCD is largely immune to, immune to it, and it will basically make sure that you're considered in the right light uh, when you do get uh, considered by Google. So the reality is, and I know this is going to shock a lot of you and you're going to disagree with me and all that kind of stuff, but Google is in trouble. Okay, they've got a new SEO, a little Indian chap, he seems like a really good bloke, but he's actually good cop and bad cop all rolled into one. And you can bet that behind the closed doors he's a hard ass, uh, just like any other CEO of a big billion dollar company will be. 
he's not there to make friends he's there to make money for the shareholders basically otherwise they kick him out um, but you know the reality remains regardless of whatever they think or whatever they try to do however they try and play the politics of uh, you know and their branding of their name um, you know when you go to Google and you search for something um, you first thing you'll notice that now they've you know basically got rid of all the ads on the right and the only ads now are the ads on the top and to get an ad position on the top uh, you have to pay more and you have to have more um, you know, markers to be in that position um, so again it's still not just a pure money auction it's still down to quality uh, and the quality to get into the top um, is uh, you know, higher than it was to get on the right um, but you know uh, besides the ads at the top um, you know, when you search something in Google the results have to appear okay there's no way around that um, and you know what we've all noticed tend to happen is that the same kind of results are coming up at the top I call that the web mafia so things like Wikipedia and Amazon who tend to come up in in those slots for particular terms um, and they may or may not be what people want you know if, if they knew that they what they wanted was on Wikipedia they could just go to Wikipedia if they knew that what they wanted to buy was they wanted to buy from Amazon they can just type in Amazon they don't really need Google um, to tell them to go to these kind of sites okay same with news sites you know, if they just wanted the news from CNN they could type in CNN and not go to Google and ask them where, what, what the news is but uh, you know what tends to happen is people can't differentiate between um, you know the URL field and the Google search bar um, so they tend to put in the name, uh, you know, like C uh, CNN into search um, to save them having to type .com at the end or because they can't remember that it's got .com at the end, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, and I've, you know, I've seen the statistical proof of this kind of stuff um, that people are tending to, you know, use Google as the URL field uh, and that's what a lot of uh, organic search traffic results are actually for. Um, for you know, a lot of the bigger sites um, because apparently people can't remember or be bothered to type out the name anyway but nonetheless so the results at the top of the search engines tend to be I'm sure you've noticed it are tending to be the web mafia and it may or may not be that you want those results and we're having to look further down or go to another page but what's happening also is that people are going to different places because they're now no longer getting the results they need from Google now if you're doing a bit of research from scratch and you don't know where to go at all then that's when you go to Google to get a clue as to where you should be going but once you know roughly where you should be going then you don't actually value Google's opinion you want to go to some sort of peer uh, network like a forum or a social network or you know your group of friends or peers and ask them what they've experienced about uh, you know the best sites in this niche okay or niche however you want to say it um, and so Google are actually losing out uh, losing traffic to this kind of uh, you know approach now but you know the time for search is diminishing the, the time for Google to be that you know that search um, preference is diminishing um, you know it's not at critical stages for them yet but it's getting to to that point where they're not going to be um, you know the most relevant um, um, what's the word anyway thing in town whatever the word for thing is um, and that's an issue and that's why uh, you know they're in trouble so they've got this compromise between the fact that they only want um, to you know have 30 results in their index they do want those to be the best 30 that they can have but that's becoming the issue because that's not the th you know the top 30 that necessarily um, people want you know what happens to all the new stuff and uh, you know and as things change you know and if they it's always the same results why do you even need to go to Google so um, let me show you um, you know actually what's happening uh, with Google um, these days